Okay, so for this stage of the process, things are very repetitive and getting something good out of it comes down to patience. I started with the head, increasing the dynamics resolution, redefining some carvings using my cutter brush. And this sculpting process is something that is very relaxing for me and I can spend a lot of time just working on a particular area. And by the way, this is more about setting up the secondary shapes and not the details just yet. The way that you refine your sculptures or the way that you detail your mesh um, might be very different from mine. It's just about getting a, a cleaner read of the volumes and the secondary shapes. There are multiple ways of doing the same thing in ZBrush. In fact, you can try many different ways of doing the same thing and then just use whatever uh, fits your workflow, whatever fits comfortable for you. So in this case, there's no right or wrong. Just use the tools that, um, that you're familiar with. And this is the reason why I like to keep my, my tool set at this stage very limited. So very, very simple brushes, the move brush, the clay brush, uh, the smooth brush as well, obviously just to keep everything clean. To move into the next part where I can actually add some smaller details, I like to do that in a cleaner topology, something that has a better distribution of the loops. And you can use polygroups, for instance, to tell Zbrush where you want those loops to be. So I can go ahead and run a Siri measure process to the head with the keep groups switch enabled. And this is a, a setting from the Siri measure process. In my case, this is a process that I use all the time. So I have created a macro, which is kind of like an action in Photoshop. That means that all I have to do is press one button and Sirius will automatically generate a nicer topology using Siri measure and obviously whatever poly group I created, subdivide the mesh as well and project the details that I had in the DynaMesh sketch. And all of this is happening automatically after pressing that button. So just to be clear, this is a button that I created myself and, and it's just a recorded macro. There's nothing fancy about it. It's just using the same process that I just described, but uh, combined into a single action. Like I said, it's a, it's a similar thing like in Photoshop. So now with a cleaner base mesh, I can spend some time refining the crevices and the secondary shapes in general. And to speed up the process of adding some of the details, I use custom brushes from my skin and creatures pack. Obviously, this is something you can do with just the standard brushes in ZBrush, but it might take a little bit longer. So in the interest of keeping these videos short and to the point, I went ahead and added small wrinkles and a bumpy surface with some of those custom brushes. To refine the bodysuit, I use exactly the same process that I use for the head. The difference here is that I perhaps use more of those polygroups that I generated at the end of the previous video and I run the Siri measure process to create a cleaner topology. And to be honest, in most cases, Siri measure is going to give you a pretty good result with the default settings, but you can always tweak things like the target polygon count and you know all those things to get a better base mesh. So I think in this case, this automated retopology worked pretty well. So I just use the smooth brushes uh, to kind of like refine the borders around the polygroups a bit. The next stage is a lot of fun and you can take advantage of the existing polygroups to create new ones. So from the geometry palette, there is a section called edge loops where you can click one single button to produce panels based on the difference of the polygroups. And this button is conveniently called panel loops. The only thing I change from the default settings are the thickness, the number of loops that are going to be generated in the in the cut up section or in the crevice and toggling the double switch off. So when it generates the panels, it will be part of the same mesh. After clicking the panel loops button, you'll get a nice cut through all the polygroups and you can refine them in any way you want. I like to smooth things out using the deformation palette, uh, maybe inflate things a little bit just to polish that, um, that shape that you got from the panel loops. For the neck piece, I repeated the same process. So again, it's more of the same, rinse and repeat polish the sketch and add polygroups. Refine the sketch with a quick zero measure. Use panel loops based on the polygroups to add panels. Refine the panel loops with sculpting brushes, smooth brushes, and you know any slider that you want from the deformation palette. For the hands, the process is also very simple. I use the slice curve, which you can access from the control and shift keys to literally cut through the DynaMesh sketch and create polygroups to separate the phalanges of the fingers. And this is basically so that you can get a cleaner edge loop around these areas. Once I have all these polygroups ready, I ran the Siri measure process on the hand with a low target polygon count. And that is pretty much it. At this stage, I have a decent base mesh. So anything from this point onwards will be essentially to add tweaks to the design and perhaps some accessories to, you know, break the silhouette or break the outline of that silhouette a little bit more. 
For example, I wanted to have some thicker panels or hard surface pieces attached to the suit. So I cloned the base mesh. I isolated the pieces of the suit that I wanted based on the panels that I already had and deleted everything else that I wasn't using. Obviously, because I deleted the rest of the body in this clone, the polygroups that I'm left with are single-sided meshes. So I can use the dynamic subdivision to add a bit of smoothness and thickness to these pieces. From the same clone pieces of the suit, I also created additional pieces uh, that were not really part of the polygroups. So these kind of like knee or sheen protectors. And an easy thing that you can do is to dynamish the entire suit and use masking brushes again to define the new pieces that you want and assign polygroup to those. So once I have those polygroups, I isolated them from the masking, deleted everything else, and then ran a quick zero measure before combining the new pieces with the other bits I extracted from the body panels. The next part of the process is more of the same again. Uh, I keep repeating myself, but again, it's once you have the, the steps of the process in place, it's just about spending the time and doing every step until you get uh, where you want to be. Right? So the adjustment of these extra pieces, like I said, is simply to reveal a bit more of those lines while also keeping them in place, if that makes sense, just so that it doesn't break the continuity of the lines. Once I had those main secondary meshes in place, I used IMM brushes to add additional details. This part of the process is also a lot of fun and it's so easy to do that you get to quickly try different options before committing to anything. From a design point of view, the idea with these IMM brushes is to add some sort of connectors or caps to the suit where maybe some tubes can connect for some specific purpose that I haven't decided yet, uh, but they're, you know, they're all add to the story. And that's about it. This is what I ended up with from this sculpting and refining process of the character. The next video in this series is all about Character Creator 4 and taking advantage of all the cool things that we can do with the AccuRig and the integration with ZBrush.